Hey guys, uh, welcome back. This is to the last round of uh, Reckless Bushwhack Zoo. Oh, just Bushwhack Zoo. Unfortunately, we lost the die roll, but to be fair, we've won a lot of them this league, so I can't really complain. And they only rolled a five. <laughs> Unfortunately, we've had really disappointing results again. Um, I'm unsure why, like, but uh, every time I record, I always seem to get worse results. Like, I played the budget version of this deck in 5-0 the league, um, and now for some reason I got, like, 2-2, two -two, but, you know, whatever. Um, and this hand is pretty bad, unfortunately. I'm just going to put that to the bottom. We're really looking for a Mana Morphos and a 1-drop. Preferably not in that order. Ah, oh, perfect. Then we'll just F6. I guess we kind of look like a escape shift deck at the minute. And they're playing Thing in the Ice deck. Interesting. Oh wow, those were those great draws. Like, really can't complain about that draw. Bit annoying how uh, you have to pay for mana like that. Just, just takes a bit of time, which is fine. And this is like where Mana Morphos really shines. Like the amount of damage that that Mana Morphos is effectively given is just ridiculous. I'm still surprised that no one else was playing Mana Morphos, um, especially since I've added Swift Spirit. It just randomly gets in a little bit more damage. And, like. Um, I've even had games where like where I've played a Swiss player on turn one and I've just gone Manamorphos, Manamorphos just to cycle a couple of them and it's just randomly got in for a lot of damage. <laughs> like yeah, I think I think they're definitely worth playing. Um so here we can play another Bushwhacker or Attacker's Command, but they have a lot of mana up. Um so I'm expecting some sort of counter spell, like if it's remand or something. If it is remand, then we're better off uh just playing two one drops. If it's mana link again, we're better off playing one two one drops. So that is what I'm gonna do. Like if they, yeah, they just like not done anything, which is very suspicious. See, like they're they're thinking now. That would have just gone like AFK or something, but I, I, I do think that they've uh, got counter up. And they're just thinking if it's worth using on a Swiss Spear, which they don't. Oh shit, I should not have F6 there. Definitely not. Okay, I was not expecting that. Um, okay, if we draw another land, then I guess we won't get. We might not get punished. Uh, so uh, the only deck I have ever seen this played in is the Take Extra Turns deck. Uh, <laughs> really not sure what to do, like if he has another thing like this, I don't really want to tap out. Wait a minute, creatures, oh no, so my creatures won't untap anyway, so pushback I won't matter. So yeah, I'm just going to play the creatures out. I assume this is going to be uh, some sort of combo deck. Yeah, the only the only deck I've seen this is the one where you take extra turns, and because you take extra turns, you just draw a lot more off it, and then you can just get effectively infinite turns, um, and then kill them with like a celestial colonnade. And I've even seen people use the infect land as well, especially if you use the the latest print 
uh, take an extra turn card, you can awaken it onto the infected land and like two shot them. Okay, so. Oh, yeah, we get the extra. Hmm. Like, one way or the other, we should have lethal. If you block. Yeah. Let's just cast it with Kicker. Wow, okay. So you must have like Cryptic Command to tap us down. No? Alright, oh, now they get priority. Yeah. Oh. Oh, okay, Kicker Drowse, yeah. And I believe this does flip. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, I believe this does flip for each trigger. On Thing in the Ice. Which isn't terrible because uh, we can just cast. Oh, no, it only does happen once. Okay, that's interesting. Copy it each time. Okay, so it doesn't actually put them on the stack. Because of burning trees into bushwhackers. Um, yeah, and he, he didn't even block. <laughs> Three, six, nine, oh. So we only would have got five extra damage, so we wouldn't have even, wouldn't have even killed him. Um, like we can play the goblin guide out, but it's just going to get bounced next turn. Cause I assume he's going to, or next, or my next combat phase, sorry. Yep, and now he's just going to start taking extra turns. So I think he is just a take extra turns deck with thing in the ice. That's fine. Oh that's nice, just lethal straight away. <laughs> wow, that's impressively quick. Let's see if he does anything else. Free information is cool. Bring in Ravelry to stop them from drawing extra cards. I don't actually think the deck runs counter spells, so I'm going to keep in the same summons. Um, however, it obviously, it's very bad against um, a thing in the ice because it will just bounce the tokens and then we're left with nothing. So we could bring in Path to Exile to deal with that. And cut again, vexing level. And we'll cut. Probably use metamorphosis. No, we will cut the devastating summons because they do. They, they could have a counter spell. And a metamorphosis. That is a very spell heavy. Uh, version. Eleven. That is very high. I still think it's correct. Maybe Eidolon could come in. Because if they're taking like extra turns and they're like serum visions and things like that. This is incredibly reactive. That's a mulligan. That's fine. So 
So one thing to decide is if we want to get a Sacred Foundry or a Stomping Ground. Uh, doesn't matter where that's going because we're just going to fetch. Um, and I'm going to choose to get a Sacred Foundry. Like Obviously the Cut Ape is good, uh, but it only gets one extra power where like Path Flex is just unusable. But then again, if we top their green creatures like Wild Nakato, then. Okay, no, I'm gonna get dumping ground then. Just because of that. Take an extra turn, yeah. Oh, that means they're gonna. Oh, they can't because they. <laughs> wow, well, yeah, they can't do it because they won't get the land in play before the miracle trigger. And I believe you have to cast the miracle spell as you draw it, not whenever you want that turn. Which is awesome. For us, at least. You may cast the spell for its miracle cost when you draw it, yep. Very kind of them. The burning tree should help with burst damage next turn if we draw a land. Uh, okay. Not that I, th I think it's going to be more of do they have um, dehydrate, was it called? I think that's basically the card they're looking for which they do not have enough mana for anymore. You can block uh, the biggest creatures, yeah. See, now I've seen Serum Visions, I kind of want to bring in Eidolon. Uh, Especially if they're like uh, tapping all my creatures down, then at least Eidolon then get them with damage. So we're going to cut Tarko's Command for Eidolon. Um, I think that's a fine switch. Yeah, yeah, because um, if they like are able to tap everything down, things like that, it, at least this is like another angle. Like a Tarko's Command obviously is. Three damage and then things like that, but uh, yeah, this this comes out a lot earlier as well. So I think I think it's fine to bring an idol on here. A rotax command, especially as the the deck is a lot more spell dense instead of creature dense after sideboarding. And I think the other thing to note is that uh, if the main wing condition is uh, obviously taking extra turns, but uh, thing in the ice, then they'll deal damage in increments of seven. So seven, then fourteen. So we don't want to get below fourteen with our shock lands, which shouldn't happen. But um, that's just something to take into consideration because that's obviously an extra combat phase they have to get through. And this hand is pretty good. So we're gonna keep. Uh, this is one of the uh, instances where it's better to play the Goblin Guide on turn 1 because the Wild Knockout isn't a guaranteed 3-3. Three, three. So it is a, at the minute it's just a Goblin Guide that doesn't have haste. And we drew that so it is better to play the Wild Knockout. And we would like to play life.
Uh, next turn we have the option of playing Eidolon or Goblin Guide and the spell. Uh, probably just going to play the Eidolon because uh, that means we have turn 3 Goblin Guide and Bushwhacker. And then next time we have Path and Bushwhacker, which is even better. Get the Sacred Foundry to pop the uh, Wildman Castle. We could do that main phase too. I don't think it makes a terrible difference. Three council. That's annoying, but fine. There's three mats. Yeah, they did take the two off Eidolon, which was good. Oh crap, I should have attacked with the Goblin Guide. Ah. Uh. That's just a stupid mistake. Sorry, it's like three, uh, twenty past three in the morning. So uh, I'm gonna blame the time on that. And that's it. I'm gonna uh, pretend and say that that's playing around another exhaustion. That that's my excuse. <laughs> okay, so it didn't actually make any difference, <laughs> which is nice to know. And another vision, so okay. Ironically, we have gone below 14 um, from shocks, fetches, and eidolons, but. Oh crap, I got the wrong land as well. I was supposed to get a safe, uh, stomping ground. I apologize for all the misplays that, like. Uh, I just. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that's not even necessarily a misplay, because this means we can still guarantee a Reckless Bushwhacker kicked next time. Oh, sorry, Surged. So I guess that still could be fine. Three, four, five, six, seven. So we don't actually have Lethal yet. Um, like we could actually just cast a bushwhacker and that would make it lethal but then if he has like a, a replicate card to tap everything down then we wouldn't And because what we saw earlier with the uh, replicate card and thing in the ice, unfortunately I believe that means that it will work the same with Eidolon where it will only trigger once if he replicates it multiple times. Tap all creatures down. That's annoying but fine. Does that come off? Oh, where is it? That will come off suspend. They will draw lots of cards. Yep. So he's up to seven cards. Three, four, five, six. Okay. Like now he's gonna have to start chaining them and making every land drop just to be able to get to a position where he can even cast spells and take an extra turn spells. Like he he probably has a couple in hand, but He's not really progressing too much by using them. Like normally, if he has a dictate or howling line, he's at least drawing multiple cards. At the minute, he's just like replacing a card. Obviously, we're definitely not in a good spot. But like cryptic commands um, and the dehydration and the replicate spell, all just like blank an entire turn. But 
we do have an answer to thing in the ice. It's fine. It's got one counter on. Oh, wow. I did forget he has the uh, Serum Vision Sex Art. So I guess with each turn he's drawing like a third of a, or a quarter of a card or something. Extra. And taking his land drops. But it's not. The game's definitely not over. Like if he plays this thing in the ice, uh, I can pass to exile it. And I'll put him down to three. Because um, he had a lot. Do uh, the will trigger on his thing in the ice, um, and then he has to find another uh, thing in the ice. Even like he, it, when he's looting times, he still needs to find like another win condition. So he has got like a like a life limit on uh, two CMC or less spells or three, sorry. Because well, especially like if he plays a uh, thing in the ice, and then I path to exile it, he can't counter it, or he can, but. Uh, I believe the only, <coughs> I believe the only counter spell they run is Cryptic Command, which therefore means he would tap out or tap enough mana so that he can't cast another taken out turn spell. Therefore dying. So he's in a bit of an awkward state. Okay, so yeah, so he has figured it out. And he's gonna bounce and draw. Unfortunately for him, we just have a little in hand. Oh no, we don't, because we don't untap our lands. That's annoying. Unfortunately, we do just have to pass. I'll get rid of that. There we go. Oh, wow. Okay, so I expect he has Cryptic Command, which means that uh, if I path his guy now, he will probably counter it, tap all my guys down, and then I can play the rest of my guys and still be able to one-hit him, I believe. So I think the correct play is do path now. Um, and then I can cast Eidolon. And, oh, that won't, won't be lethal. Be pr pretty close actually because then he just can't cut. So we'll get in for uh, two. Yeah, get in for two and then. Oh, he doesn't care, okay. Oh, he had nothing, he was just bluffing. <laughs> okay. 